Hello, lovely viewers. Welcome to S Class. Remember, S Class is a media show that airs every single Friday. And today on the panel, we are going to talk about about COVID. How COVID has affected Ugandans and also young people at large. Today on the panel, we have Dr. Paulo Obuku. For those of you who remember last year, he was one of those people who, who was running around talking about medical equipment and also medical doctors, them not being paid well and also salary of medical doctors. So today, Dr. Obuku, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Before you even go further, I would just like you to give us a brief of, your, of yourself. Who is Dr. Obuku? So I'm a medical doctor who trained here in Mulago, Makerere mm. Medical School. Yes. I graduated with Bobby Wine, by the way, 2003, so he's my OB. Is there also a Well, not a medical doctor, but they were at the same time on campus. Okay. okay he did MDD, mm. but he's a greater guy than I am, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. And uh, I then worked in several places, including uh, government uh, entities, mm. Arua Hospital, where I did my internship, the UN family a bit. Mm. Then, largely in HIV AIDS control and TB control programs. And I found myself taking interest in research, where I moved to the Joint Clinical Research Center, again HIV, then Macquarie University. Mm -hmm. And eventually I started my PhD about eight years ago. I'm still going, it's long overdue. And now I'm very happy to be part of the, what we call the medical policy. Medical policy, you know, medical association, mm -hmm. and this kind of thing of trying to improve uh, the performance of the health sector, because that's the idea. Yeah. So, Dr. Ibuku, if, if, if I take you back before before this year came in, we 2019, we had very many doctors who were, like you were talking about it, medical doctors all over the social media and TV, like we are seeing you, Dr. Ibuku, is talking, talking for the rights of medical doctors and so only talking for the medical doctors. Was that thing solved? Because we no longer see you talking about like you used to no, talk about No, this was it. actually in 2017. Oh. Time has, uh, yeah, has passed moved like very years. fast. And what we were talking about, was what we are seeing today. COVID-19 has helped to expose the strengths of our health system, but also the weaknesses and, and how, and informed us on where needs attention and how we can do it. But we observed these things earlier and we talked about them, but the context is that COVID has presented a threat and the leaders of this country have observed this threat and they are thinking now they should invest mm. in the healthcare professionals. We are not enough. Mm. Not only doctors. Whereas I mentioned doctors, doctors who work alone. They are nurses. They are midwives. Mm. They are clinical officers. And they are the laboratory technologists who are sleeping overnight yeah. to provide these tests in time. Mm. So that was the idea. And of course, salaries were increased. Some jobs were created. And the blood transfusion services were improved and invested in. National medical stores received a bit more money, but you know Uganda's population is growing very fast mm. and we need to match this requirement over and beyond the politics. You know right now we are matching. Mm. When it comes to MPs, we are cutting constituencies here and there. When it comes to um, police force and army, we are having sufficient numbers mm. compared to the population. When it comes to health mm. and education, we are still wanting. Yes. If, if you look at the, today our health sector, we have very many doctors who are now affected by COVID. Like they have got COVID when they are blind of duty. And also we have very many <coughs> nurses and midwives who have got COVID. We have also got cleaners who have got COVID. Do you think like government was prepared when came, when the thing of COVID all started? Because we are seeing it from far. But we are seeing it from China. Then now it's just in our doorstep. We are seeing doctors getting affected. Well, government was prepared in as much as they have invested in the public health sector. Mm -hmm. You know, your preparation is proportional to your investment in terms of financial resources, human capital, equipment, infrastructure, medical technologies mm -hmm. in the system, mm -hmm. and information system mm -hmm. to deliver quality health service. Mm -hmm. So COVID-19 found us that way. Good enough, government understood its strength and it employed prevention strategies including lockdown mm. which uh, curbed the spread of COVID-19 in the early phase. Although unfortunately obviously we are looking at the number of deaths. Started One right. death is bad enough. Love that it right now. Starting death is terrible mm. uh, because it can be avoided. Yeah. Just as malaria can be avoided, tuberculosis and HIV. 
when you are still in lockdown, government said now people who are bringing COVID yeah. are the truck drivers and people who come from on the borders. Right. And right now, we, we feel the reports, very many cases are now found in Kampala. So we are no longer looking at truck drivers, we are now looking at us. Citizen who are, who are in the city center. So what is what is the problem? Is, so truck drivers are no longer coming in. Now COVID is less within us. So, what? so it was a catch to two, according to His Excellency the President, that uh, it would be very difficult to stop cargo from coming in because essentially it would uh, it would be cut our livelihood. But uh, I think it was possible to 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 test isolate and treat drivers who are found positive had we not allowed them to come straight you know we were allowing them to come straight and deliver the results three days after and they have spread all over you know sometimes befriending our commercial sexual workers you know massacre way along the trans-african highway and that in a way stimulated or caused the further spread but you know uh, Truck drivers were necessary in the spread of COVID. But they are not the only ones. Because now it continued in the community because we are not observing SOPs. So it's very important that we recognize now COVID is with us. Who brought it is another story. Definitely. You know, if you look at the HIV pandemic, mm. it also followed the truck driver's pathway mm. into Uganda mm. and out of Uganda. You know, you know Malaba, uh, uh, Jinja, there is a stop there, yeah. in Njeru, Masakai, you know, there's a lot mm. in, in, in the border points where trucks stop all the way to Rwanda, all the way to Rakai, all the way to Congo. Mm. That is the belt of the pandemic of HIV. Mm. So it's just about interaction between humans, either through you know social gatherings, okay, or through sexual intercourse or sexually transmitted diseases. Very, very important means of transmission. And once we understand that, then we institute measures which are effective in cutting the transmission cycle of COVID-19 in this case. For you who are into medical, like for us, like we are not very much into medical. We have seen very many doctors who are saying that there, there are no measures in the hospitals, like patients come in and go out without washing hands, without to, like observing their pressure, or, sorry, their, their, their temperature, and also they, 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 access, they access everything and they touch everything. So this has led doctors and also midwives, plus everyone who works in the hospital at a risk of getting COVID. So why, like, why, how best can government end this, in that if a patient comes in, you can know how the patient is doing, whether he or she is having COVID or not. Because we have seen even patients who are brought at an emergency and they are saying they, are, they have COVID, so doctors run away from them because they have no protective gears. So how best can we reduce this and end this? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mubiru. What you are saying is very important. If you send a footballer to a match and it's wet and he has no football boots which have Stabs, is going to slide, is going to fall, is going to fracture the leg, the bone in the leg, or dislocate the ankle. Just going to be having injuries without shin guard. If you ride your motorcycle without a helmet, without shin guard, without gloves, the moment that motorcycle rolls, you can get serious head injuries. And if you survive serious head injuries, your body uh, will be injured fractures on the rib and so on, and you'll have all sorts of bruises. This is what the healthcare professionals are facing. A choice between working with nothing, protective gear, and getting infected because it's real. 75 in Uganda, 1.5 million world over. Healthcare professionals who have acquired COVID at the workplace. So workplace policy about decent work policy, about safety. First, don't die because you want to save someone and you don't have the gear. Why? 
we are going to lose two lives. Yet you are so crucial at this moment in this war because you have the knowledge and the skills and the competence to fight COVID-19. So it's very important that government and employers in the private sector invest in protective gear like that and this, basic, include gloves, include goggles or face shields, and so on and so forth, up to the space suit for healthcare professionals who are taking care of people who have this disease which has no cure. We don't need to lose our military in this war, and they are the healthcare professionals. So that's the idea. When you see healthcare professionals with the drawing, they are fearing to acquire the disease. We have the knowledge on how to handle, but if we don't have the equipment, we can't apply that knowledge and skill. When we have the equipment and the knowledge and everything in place, we still, there's still a chance of acquiring, but we can accept it because we are protected and say any, anyway, we are using the best means available to handle this condition to save human life, but we got it, so it is understandable. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Rather than going there live and attacking COVID, it will not forgive you okay. as, a, as a doctor or nurse. Thank you so much. Like recently, was it yesterday when Ministry of Health came out and said, "Now the test of COVID is around 350,000 shillings." Mm -hmm. How many people in Uganda can afford 350? Yes, yet we have those who can sleep without any meal a day. No, that test was that that letter was misunderstood by the public. Or there by? are two windows. Mm. There is a free for service window, where if you are unable to afford, you can go and wait three four days. And those who can afford pay, and that is good, because then it is a way of co-financing. Co-financing meaning is topping up so that government is able to sustain that service. Mm -hmm. Without the public paying, that test is the most expensive test in the public health system. Sure. Because even CT scan is now 150,000. Mm -hmm. So having a test of 350 is twice the price of CT scan. Mm -hmm. And still people cannot afford cities. Therefore, it's important that those who can afford, because you are choosing between life and death, what is the price of life and death? Isn't it? Mm. People are buying iPhones, they are contributing in wedding meetings. They are. Why can you not put your life first? So it is a call from the Ministry of Health to streamline our thinking, that those who have money mm. should pay. Those who don't have, we take care of you, and that's the case. Because those who make money, make it on the back of those, even if you're MTM, people are buying your airtime, they are the poor. Mm. Buying 2,000, eventually it comes and pays you a very good salary. Mm. Pay the money. If you have the money, you can afford it, you have a job, pay it. Then for those of us who go to Mulago, mm. let it be free. Then the country will be following the SDG 10, equity or equality, reducing the equality in incomes. Mm. Why should someone like Mukwano family go and you disturb them in Mulago? Take them to Nakasero and they pay. Take them to MBN laboratories and they pay. Why should you Sudir or those rich men or this uh, Bitature, the owner of all these hotels in Kampala? Mm. Why are you disturbing them to go for a free test in Mulago? So should we also say the members of parliament because they are getting a lot of money? No, the MPs also. should pay. But they are getting free service from the parliament. Yeah, let they are getting pay. tested for free. No, let them pay. So should that be a problem? They can afford it. Okay, then if we, if we go back to the, the results. I've seen and I've got many, very many people tested for the COVID and results come back after a week. Somebody tested on Friday and results come back on Thursday, the person is positive. This person was not self-quarantined kept moving in public, by the time results come back, by the time they call the person, nowadays not like those days, because they used to come for you, where are you, I'm here, stop there, don't even move. But now, they tell you, come, bring yourself to the facility, which is one of the hardest things right now, nowadays. Yeah, turnaround time is a function of the health system investment. If you have few laboratory technologists, who I am aware are even sleeping in the labs to make sure Ugandans get their results, that's what government is paying for. And they are not even being paid the allowances, those laboratory technologies. They just can't complain because they are always in the lab. 
But if you go and discover, have they been paid the allowances, don't labor technology? No. They are tired. They are few. The tests are increasing. So we need to increase the number of technologists in those labs, pay them well, pay them in advance, motivate them. Then, get a cheaper test and uh, easy to use machines. They are there now, coming out. Otherwise, the halfway house is to use what we call gene expert technology, which is already in over 100 laboratories in Uganda. So the problem is not that you have delayed to get your result mm. and you are moving around. The problem is in there. If we do not settle the human capital issues in those labs, government labs are understaffed. If we don't settle that, if we don't pay them well, that is the result we are getting. As I say, we are as prepared as we have invested. We are as prepared as the money we have eaten. Who eats the money? They, they Those own. ones who are in charge of it. They are hyenas taking care of meat. So they leave us bones and they crush the nyama. Mm -hmm. mm. So let us go back to mm. how the public of Uganda has taken over COVID. At first we, we agreed and we accepted to be quarantined like lockdown. No, no necessary movement was reduced, like everyone was keeping at home. And right now when they said that they, they, they reduced the pitch, so everyone is back to work. And I remember recently when the rumor came out and they were saying they are calling for another lockdown, everyone was saying, I can't go back in lockdown. I tested it, I can't go back. So like people are now not focusing on COVID or the disease itself, they are focusing on hunting for money. So what is the problem with you? Are Ugandans, are not prepared, are Ugandans are not prepared to fight COVID or just that people who are see, hungry and not have no money? Very important question. The risk of COVID is very low. The risk of catching COVID is less than catching malaria. Only that once you catch it, your risk of dying is more than malaria. If you look at COVID, 20 million people or 22 million people have got COVID, about a million have died. Malaria, 228 million last uh, two years ago, 2018. Only 405,000 died. You get what I mean? Mm. So COVID kills much more. So try not to catch it. That's number one. Number two, go out there and look for business. Follow SOPs. Wash your hands. In a taxi, please. Limited number. Masks. Don't shake hands. Overcrowding. Avoid. And you will survive. Because the baseline risk is low. It has increased, but it's still low. Baseline risk meaning the opportunity, the chance that you will catch it is still low. Mm. But it has gone up from where it was at the beginning. It was nil. We had no deaths. We had few cases. Now we have a thousand active cases, whom we know. So we can say we have about 3,000, 5,000 in the community. Mm. But it depends on how we can test. If we can test more, we'll catch them. If we test few, we won't catch them. The beauty about COVID is most people will recover. So the risk is worth it, especially if you are young. If hunger is killing you. Okay? But COVID kills the faster. Than hunger. Mm. 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 And, and if you look at the way, you know, because we, we saw different people complaining, that my mom didn't die of COVID. Like, there is a lady who died, and the, the family, where people were saying, the mother did not die of COVID. Well, that means she came out and said the mother died of COVID and the mother didn't move, didn't go anywhere. Don't you think that this thing has been brought in, like it's now politicized? Yes. People are seeing it like it's a government thing. COVID-19 was politicized from the US, from China, it came with its own politics. International politics, national politics and local politics. Doesn't that put us as local at a risk of getting it? Yes, of course, uh, when there is politics in it, then decisions are political and uh, they may favor or disfavor the public health interventions. Political decisions like lockdown, which may also lock down opponents, will indeed cut out COVID-19 spread. It also locks down opponents from campaigning, but it also helps in terms of public health and saving lives. 
political decision is to open up because you are succumbing to pressure, it increases the chance of spread, although it is democratic. So COVID-19 is also a democratic disease. It's liberal. It will catch you as you go there campaigning in your democracy. It is a catch to too. But COVID-19 is there, it's really skilly. If you want to be the next victim, go and look for it. You will get it, it will kill you. We will bury you, thank you very much. And we have seen very many people who are saying, if, if COVID is there, I don't want to be tested, but I want to get medication for COVID. We have seen very many people, they, 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 have, they have rumors saying, why don't I would like you either take Panado, you take Azithro, or you take vitamin C. Maybe they have bought that medicine, and they are now taking it, like that sort of medication regardless whether the doctor is or not, like they are taking me. And very many doctors have called their colleagues. Please, if you hear... Hello, my name is Wamboga Teredon. I'm happy to introduce to you Centers for Her, a mobile application that links girls and women who experience violence to the various support services, including sexual reproductive health services. With the Centers for Her app, girls and women can now access free fast and confidential post-violence services. These include emergency shelter, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health... ...facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post-exposure prophylaxis, emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Centers for Her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. To access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the Categories option, choose Police, select a station closest to your location, this will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points. If you cough, you take this medicine. And all you take warm water, or you add in ginger and everything. How, what is your take on this? Well, the, first of all, there is no known effective treatment that attacks the virus like we have antiretroviral, IRVs for HIV. We don't have that one for COVID-19. Having said that, there are remedies that can reduce the symptoms. Panadol will reduce the fever. Drinking lots of fluids will also help you if you've got it. Strengthening your immune system is beneficial for any disease, not only COVID-19. So those things are around there. But remember, there is none of those drugs attacking the virus, which is the problem anyway. So you have to keep that in mind. Hmm. Yeah. We go on the issue of young people. How did, how, how did COVID-19 affect young people's way of living right now? Because you have seen very many people that are no longer going to school, yeah. they are at home. Government of late said that they are going to be studying on TV, which is not effective, and they, they, they are going to be giving out those papers for them to be reading, like not to the, the papers, and also to up country, to village people also get those papers in that they can practice reading and also writing the way it was in school. But still, it did, it did, it, it's not very effective. People are still lacking. Trust me, if I tell you people who have looked for all these things from the divisions, they are telling them that these things are not here. Very, very important. COVID-19 has affected adults, it has affected uh, young people, it has killed more older people than young people, but also young people have died. The livelihoods or the enjoyment of life by young people has been tremendously affected. They are not going to school, those who are school going, okay? And it also has affected uh, the young girls, teenage pregnancies have gone up. It was already up, one in every four, four teenagers four who is a girl was having, uh, was pregnant. Mm. But probably it has gone to maybe two, I don't know, in some communities, two in every four. Mm. Because of this, uh, you know, sitting down and doing nothing and people are thinking about sexual intercourse. Yeah. Yeah? So that, those are some of the unwanted effects. But it has also protected uh, children from catching COVID-19. If you look at places where they have opened, in the US they have recorded over 8,000 infections. 
I don't know how many days. This is what I saw on CNN this morning. Very, very important that uh, we protect our future. No need to have a child die because they must go to school. But it's possible to also open the schools in a way that we have SOPs and can ensure continuity for the candidate classes. Very, very important. Medical schools, they are still young people. They need to go out there okay, and treat Uganda if we equip them with protective gear. So it's really a catch to two that we need to, uh, to think about carefully. Yes, young people have been affected negatively, but also we need to protect society, they are future. And then if, if you still look at the, the, the way COVID has affected young people, you as a person who has been into medical for so, some good time, and you, you practice medical, like, it's like your dream. So very many young people who wanted to become like you, somebody proper in future, <clears throat> they wanted to be doctors, and they were in their final years. Right now, the few months to come, they will be in the hospital practicing, like those are interns. But now, like, they, they can't go. Are they going to go to practice? Are they going to go to the hospital to practice like the way they are supposed to do it? Yes. Or not? Yes. When you train a soldier, it's for war. And we're in a war. We have been trained to, pre we have been preparing for this kind of war. We are the front line. We are the ones to protect the country. And what better way than to train during a war? What we need to do is to give them protective gear so that there are minimal injuries and no death. It's possible. Right now we have had 75 health, five healthcare professionals having COVID. I've not heard of one who is even admitted with serious illness. It's possible, of course, these are confidential issues, but I've not heard of one dying. That one. So we need to do that so that we encourage others to fight this war because we are the ones who are equipped with the knowledge and skills to do it. But we lack the protective gear. So these young people, the interns, they are doing a very good job, but we are telling them, don't die heroes or heroines at 26 or 25. Not necessary. Not necessary. Those making those decisions have lived their full life, their post-retirement. They shouldn't tell you to kill your youth, to kill your life. No. Without giving you the impulse. So Dr. Boko, I even, if, if you are telling them they are ready to go in the war, it, it, will it be important for them to just enter the war? Like, we have these ones who are there, the interns who are there. They are, they are practicing. So when you bring in these new ones, like we are telling the gears are here, everything is here, enter the war. We train them. We orientate them the first month. We should be able to train them on infection prevention and control. So they don't catch COVID. They are already trained, by the way. Our kind of training is that even at an undergraduate, you are on the ward seeing patients. Then internship will release you under supervision. After internship, you become a medical officer. Bus, you're on your own. You can run a health facility. So uh, we cannot learn in a computer. Then come and treat you. We must touch your body. Know how it feels when you're pain, you're having tenderness or pain. Know when your abdomen is swollen or the liver. Know when your kidney is paining. Listen to your chest. And know when in fact it is blocked because of pneumonia, for example. Be able to see that you are having difficulty in breathing. All that is practical, but mm -hmm. we cannot do it any other way. Dr. Buka, I happen to come from a very... ...facility. We have seen doctors at the ward. They are saying the wards are full of patients whom they don't know their status. I'm talking about COVID. They come and take off the sample. But by the time the results come back, the patient has packed. It's no more. The, the results are positive. So all these ones who are in that ward, the ward contains around five to seven people, more than even that. And doctors are saying, like, it, unless when the ministry comes out and starts testing everything and the results come back there and the, that the patient gets medication, it's very, very important. And you of late, you came out and said, the, many patient COVID, patients who have COVID, who are in isolation right now, who are getting medication, are not badly off. They can isolate themselves at home and get medication. Yeah. And these ones who are badly off can be entered into the hospital. ETU. So, how practical is this and how best can we do it this? It is practical. Nobody wants to go and eat portion and beans or no food in these hospitals. If you have your good food at home, it's good for you psychologically. It's also good for you in terms of your immune system that you are eating well at home. So if you have no 
severe symptoms require admission and hospitalized stay at home uh, we can tell you we can prescribe for you treatment you take at home in terms of supportive care you know mm -hmm. otherwise hospital bed should be reserved for the very sick you know the situation that people live into in our country somebody has one room and they have around four kids plus the wife they are around six now in a room and you want this person to go back and get medication from home how practical is this there we need to think about alternatives because supposing so many people have it what do you do and hospitals are full there's what we call triage the very sick get care first definitely that is it otherwise who will you choose you choose me because I'm a member of parliament to sit there and eat food, for example, when someone is dying and needs a bed. No. We have to do what is right by our ethics. It is our duty as doctors to attend to the very sick person. Even when a bomb explodes, you don't just go and pick people. You look for the most injured. Those you find dead, you leave. Those you find very injured and cannot survive, you also leave. And you get those who are like that. I thought you were to take everyone. No. Why not? Those who are fine like you will leave you. Because sometimes, you know, they just have bruises. Mm -hmm. That's called triage. You triage. It's normally done by paramedics or nurses. Mm -hmm. nurses yeah. So the doctor is waiting behind there yeah. to receive the critical cases that need some intervention the others cannot give. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. We also triage. The very sick are attended to, and those who are complaining that lunch has delayed, go home and eat better lunch. So, if you say that very many of them who, who are now put into our, our ETUs are supposed to be home because of, of late we saw there are those who record themselves. Ever since we came in, they were also giving us one tab and they're just playing around. So, they're like, and, and if you look at COVID, very many people are saying that like, COVID does not attack young people. It affects the old. As the young people, still, our immunities are still strong, we can still survive, like we don't care about COVID. So we need to understand that COVID attacks everybody. Although those who die are commonly those who are older, above 50 years, above 60, above 70, they will die more and more as they grow, as they are older. Those who have comorbidities or other conditions like diabetes, like cancer, like heart problems, okay? or lung problems before, they will die faster. But young people generally are spared for reasons not known. But in the countries where the burden is so big, even young people die. Yeah. Although the proportion will be low. I, I, I have a feeling COVID is more into Kampala than village areas. Well, COVID is where there are many people. And they are mixing anyhow. Mm. So it will be in urban centers. Mm. It will be where there is mass transit buses and so on. In the village people are walking. One person is there like my village, your neighbor is that side. But here in town, you know, you are all crowded in these flats and where there are slums, you call them slums and so on. Very, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to realize that the population dynamics affect the body. Yes. New York is a very big organized slum. Very crowded. They use one big train. Mm? And therefore the spread is more likely the underground transport. Mm. That's why New York was hit terribly. Italy, the city which was hit, has very many old people. And therefore many died. What would be your recommendation to everyone who has not yet got COVID and those who are... If you haven't got COVID, don't get it. Don't mix SOPs like me and you, mask. Wash hands, soap and water, sanitize. Don't shake hands. It is okay to greet each other. We are now getting used. So behavior change. And for young people, the same way we say use a condom, is you. Use a mask. It will save you. Even those who recover from COVID have very poor quality of life. Both you, your chest is damaged, depending on the severity of the disease. Sure. Okay, so just the... Uh, Surviving is not enough. You must try. Okay? Yeah. Follow the... Avoid the crowded environment. Uh, don't have to go to places in town when you... It's not necessary. Unless it's a matter of food, life and death, you can go there.
Don't drink in groups and don't trust your friends. <laughs> to say, ah, he's my cousin, he's my brother, you don't know where they have been. Put on masks. Okay? Avoid public transport. Public transport has How been found to be a risk factor. How are we going to move? Walk. Walk. Because I know you're young people, you may not have a car. Only those who pay inside. Walk. You avoid. But the border is actually safer. If they put on the mask, the mask it's safer mm. than that closed. You know, you're trying to avoid closed environment. Yeah. Like here, I didn't want. I thought it would be in some or penthouse out there in the, the run. Okay? So, those are some of the things. Uh, and of course, prepare your body. Eat well, exercise. Yeah? I think that's my message. Follow the government SOPs and, uh, and, and, and stay safe, stay home. Especially the young people. Where are you roaming to? So thank you so much, Dr. Boko. I just wish you good luck in your new position. I think I hear you're going into politics. Yes. Mm. Yes, I'm trying to. I'm trying to go into the mainstream politics. Definitely. From medical politics Amen. to politics, politics. Politics of the parliament. Yes. So we just wish you work, good thank luck you. As, as young people. So thank you so much. You didn't make it hard for me to find you. Please continue with that. Those are the people that we want because I've tried very many old people who are in big positions like you and they are very hard. They are like, I, you know, I have, I have a big schedule, but you didn't make it hard for me to find you. Like, thank you so much for responding to what you're welcome. Talking. So this has been his class. This has been Dr. Buku, leader of Uganda Medical Association. He's the president. For those who saw him in 2017, he was up and down fighting. By for the way. I finished my term of office last year. Are you for real? So it's Professor Idro Richard, who is the president. So if you had wanted the president, you should have asked me. Sure. I can still give his contacts. Wow. Mm. Praise you will. Mm. And I, I will look for him the way I looked for you. I can't fail to find him. If mm. he's welcoming, just like you. Mm. So thank you so much. This has been Dr. Kole Ubuku. For those who saw him in 2017, he was there running up and down, fighting for the doctors and also midwife nurses, everyone. So Dr. thank you so much. This has been his class. See you. Next time. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Hello, my name is Wamboga Teridon. I'm happy to introduce to you Centers for Her, a mobile application that links girls and women who experience violence to the various support services, including sexual reproductive health services. With the Centers for Her app, girls and women can now access free, fast and confidential post-violence services. These include emergency shelter, police stations, legal aid, counseling, toll-free helplines, health facilities and services like HIV and AIDS post-exposure prophylaxis, emergency family planning pills if reported within 72 hours, treatment of STDs and other injuries, among others. Centers for Her app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. To access any of the services, for example, police stations, tap on the Categories option, choose Police, select a station closest to your location, this will be represented by a black pin. You will then get directions to the center. Centers for Her is an app that women, girls, community leaders, and service providers can all use to refer survivors of violence to different service points.